Thank you all for joining. Pleasure to once again be on this uh, Wednesday evening rendezvous that we have every week. Uh, let's ask that God will guide and bless our time together. Gracious, loving Father, thank you that you have brought us together once again uh, on this platform uh, online. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, <clears throat> the technologies and the connections will remain strong as we contemplate on your word and uh, your uh, and who you are. And thank you so much for revealing yourself to us and continue, Father, to increase our faith, grow in our faith so that we may remain strong uh, as a witness for Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, Father, we just commit this time into your hands, asking for your blessings as you lead Praveen to, uh, to facilitate the study today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Pastor Dan, for leading us in this prayer. Once again, well, uh, I welcome you all for our Wednesday evening uh, Bible study. Uh, you, you, we all know that last year we studied uh, uh, episode of Ephesians. And um, I myself was uh, personally blessed as I was studying the book of uh, uh, Ephesians. And I told you, like this year also, we'll be picking up some subjects which we can discuss for the uh, year and uh, now and then we can pick up some other uh, topics and uh, we can discuss about the subjects that you wanted to uh, suggest as well. So for me, for this year, I would like to start another uh, subject. This time I'll be taking another episode. Uh, this would be one of the interesting uh, episodes and uh, many find it difficult to read, many find it difficult to understand various aspects of this uh, epistles. That is, uh, epistle of epistle written to Hebrews. This is considered as one of the general epistles. You know, there are uh, epistles are divided into two part, parts: Pauline epistles and general epistles. Pauline epistles are all written by Apostle Paul, and general epistles are written by various other apostles. So this is one of the episodes that we are going to discuss for this year. I'll try to uh, go as fast as we can. We will not be going through uh, each and every verse and word by word we are not going to study but we will be touching all the themes, uh, all the main uh, uh, topics and themes and arguments that are brought in the episodes. That those things we will be uh, touching and we will be studying them. Uh, for today, I would like to give an introduction to the book, uh, episode to uh, Hebrews. Uh, of course, you may feel just a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Sachin also gave introduction uh, as he was teaching a New Testament survey. He was leading uh, through the survey of uh, uh, book of Hebrews. Mine would not be like a survey or a survey through the book of Hebrews, but uh, uh, I'll be just giving you some introduction uh, introduction to the uh, episode uh, written to uh, Hebrews and from next week onwards we will be going into the text and we'll be studying as parts and as a, a, a like sometimes as text parts we can take and sometimes as themes we can take and study through that episode. So if, if episode written to Hebrews is a unique episode. It is called letter written to Hebrews but it doesn't start as a letter. It has some unique features. It has three natures, three three kind of genres we can uh, we can consider uh, that are sure, that are revealed in Book of Hebrews. In the beginning, it is like a an essay. It starts like an essay, and then in the middle, as we are reading it and all, it will go and it it, it looks as if somebody is giving a sermon. These, these are the feelings we get as we are reading. And at the end, once we reach to the end of the letter, uh, end of it, it looks like a letter again. So in the beginning, it looks like an essay. We can see it in from uh, Hebrews chapter verses 1 to 2. That's how it starts with that theme and all. And then uh, it becomes like a sermon from chapter 2 onwards. And then chapter 13, it looks like an episode where the author quotes people, some people's names and gives regards to some people and makes some concluding statements. 
So this guy, but the contents that are dealt in the book of episode, uh, Hebrews are very profound, very deep, and they're very challenging. Because of that, many Christians, they find it very difficult to read the book of Hebrews. Some people, they compare it, book of Hebrews almost, uh, it is as difficult as reading uh, book of Revelation. In such a way, they, uh, they compare it. So it is a very difficult episode to interpret. And another thing is, through book of epistles, if you read, you will come across so many atonement theories. Actually, we the, when we talk about atonement, atonement theory and all, we many of many of the times uh, we think there is only one atonement theory. Most of the Christians do think there is only one atonement theory that is called penal substitutionary atonement theory. And some people have a little bit more exposure and they believe there are more than one atom, uh, atonement theory. But if you read book of Hebrews in the in this particular letter itself, you will find at least six to seven atonement theories. Uh, all these are unique ways of looking at death, burial and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. That does not mean, uh, you, I mean, there are more than one uh, uh, atonement theory. That does not mean one theory is only right, the other theory is wrong. It is not like that. But when you read Book of Hebrews, we understand the author was using various analogies through which we can, through which the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus may make sense. So that's what very strongly we will feel as we are reading Book of Hebrews. For those, uh, from as I said, many find it very difficult to understand. But for those who are willing to read and try to reflect upon it. <coughs> They'll be reminded of how blessed they are to put their trust in Jesus Christ. So as we're reading itself, it gives the vibes to all of us, you know, how great Jesus is, how, <coughs> how Jesus is greater and better than various characters and various systems and how Jesus is better and greater than various um, now, figures who, from the Old Testament scripture. So the, 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 those are the things explained in book of Hebrews. So as we are reading, we will be reminded how what a great person Jesus Christ is and how blessed we are to put our trust in him. And uh, for those who are reading and in, with interest and reflect, they will be impressed with the superiority of Jesus Christ and his new covenant over Moses and the old covenant. You entire book of Hebrew is more or less like a comparison between Old Testament, Old Covenant, and Old Old Covenant characters, and then how Jesus is superior to everything that is from Old Covenant and Old Testament, Old Old Covenant uh, characters, and uh, and this also has uh, some warnings. Book of Hebrews have some warnings. These uh, the warnings are about uh, uh, apostasy it means uh, people who are leaving faith who put their faith in Jesus Christ and then later they're backsliding uh, backsliding is the modern uh, term we use but apostasy is the technical term people use it so there are warnings about apostasy and there are warnings about uh, uh, so hard, hard, uh, hardening of our heart and being stubborn to the instruction of God. So these are the three things we find. We will be reminded about how great we are to put our trust in Jesus and we will be impressed by the superiority of Jesus Christ and we would we are given warning in the epistles uh, about apostasy. Let us look at the background of this letter. Primarily, the author. So uniquely, this letter, we are calling it letter, but we don't know who the author is, basically. Okay, Our author him either does not identify himself in the entire epistle. Uh, so we truly do not know who is the author exactly. But many believe that uh, Apostle Paul can be the author of Book of Hebrews. Okay, like uh, an early church father named Clement of Alexandria. He believed that Apostle Paul uh, may be the author of Book of Hebrews. Uh, it is because in uh, Hebrews 2, verse 3, it is mentioned that we receive the gospel from the Lord directly 
So who who else we can we find in the book of Acts than Apostle Paul who received the gospel directly from the Lord, as he also mentioned in Galatians chapter one verse eleven to twelve, where he says he received the gospel directly from the Lord. And but still there are many people who deny that Apostle Paul is not the author. There are many arguments in favor of Paul, and there are many uh, arguments uh, against it. And there are some some people in the history, uh, they claim that there may be some other people also might have written, like uh, Barnabas. Some say Barnabas might have written the book of Hebrews, like uh, early church father Tertullian. He thought Barnabas can, my, uh, sorry, he guessed Barnabas can be the author. And Martin Luther, he guessed um, Apollos can be the author of uh, book of Hebrews. Apollos, uh, you know, who was a uh, preacher and uh, whom Apostle Paul um, uh, baptized and he received uh, Holy Spirit and all who was taught by uh, Aquila and Priscilla. And uh, uh, he was, he came, he started preaching the gospel without meeting Jesus Christ and knowing the apostles and all. But uh, uh, like Martin Luther says, uh, Apollos can be the writer because of the kind of knowledge he has uh, on the Old Testament scriptures and the understanding he has. And uh, there are some others like uh, uh, Adol van uh, Harnock, a German Lutheran theologian. He guessed that uh, Priscilla can be the author of Book of Hebrews. So there are many opinions about the author. There is no uh, information with certainty that can to say, uh, I mean, to say surely so and so person is the author. As um, uh, we also can accept as uh, origin in a early church father who said like you know, uh, but who wrote the epistle? Uh, to be sure, only God knows. This is a statement he said regarding the author of Hebrews. He says, no one knows who wrote the book of Hebrews, only God knows. Yeah, we, we don't know it either, but uh, it is by the work of God, by the work of the Holy Spirit, it, it was made part of the canon. And it is it has been uh, given to us through ages. And we all are benefited by this book as we are growing in our spiritual walk with Jesus Christ. Who are the recipients? The Most of the people say the recipients of this letter are the Jewish Christians. Which Jewish Christian? The Jewish Christians who are living in Palestine or the Jewish Christians who are living outside Palestine? Most of the people say that this, this is written to uh, people who are living, the Jewish Christians who are living in Palestine and who are also are becoming apo, apost, uh, sorry, um, what we'll call, um, we call it apostate, you know, apostasy, means who left faith, who are uh, at the verge of leaving their faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, for them, this, this letter has been written. That's what many people say. Most believe the recipients were in Palestine and the author is writing it from Rome. And some others suggest that the readers are in Rome and the author is elsewhere, based upon uh, uh, the verses written in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 24. In any case, uh, we understand one thing for sure, that it is written for Jewish Christians. And we can find it in Hebrews chapter 10, 34 and 13, verse 19. Through these verses, we understand the recipients are Jews who became Christians. What is the date of writing? Even the date of writing is also not very sure about this letter. But one thing we understand for sure, this is not uh, uh, a letter which was written during the Gnostics time. What I meant by that is, this is a letter, is not uh, this this is not written during 2nd and 3rd centuries where so many uh, counterfeit gospels, so many counterfeit letters were being written in the name of apostles and so many uh, other church leaders. So it is not written that time. Uh, probably it is written during the first century itself. And since there is no mention of the destruction of the temple, we can guess that this might have been written before 70 AD because there is no mention of destruction of 
Jerusalem temple. The, the author writes as if there are priests and the priestly duties and temple worship sacrifices are continuing. In, so in Hebrews, we feel that, right? So it, 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 it gives a sense and feel to us that uh, uh, the author was still believing that these sacrificial things are happening. That means it must be written before the destruction of the temple. That means it must be written before 70 AD. And... Uh, it is also written, if it is written to the Jews in Palestine and all, mostly it might have been written between 66 to 70 AD. During this time, the persecution started against Christians and uh, uh, many many people, especially Jews and Gentiles who became Christians, they were leaving their faith. That is the time frame this letter has been written to encourage them to, uh, uh, to exhort them to be strong in their faith faith and then let's look at the purpose of this letter what is the purpose the primary purpose we find here is to prevent the readers from abandoning their faith as i said the author is writing this letter to the uh, apostates like you know who are leaving their faith so in order to encourage them strengthen them he started explaining about the gospel and supremacy of jesus so that they may not leave their faith and may stay strong in their faith. To encourage uh, his Jewish brethren not to go back to the Old Testament. There are so many Jews who have become Christians. They were leaving the Christianity and going back to Old Testament things. We all know uh, in book of uh, Acts also we find Acts chapter 15 where Jewish leaders were influencing uh, Gentile Christians. Similarly, a lot of Jewish people were being influenced and they were going back to uh, Old Testament rituals, Old Testament uh, um, festivals, Old Testament uh, practices and uh, Old Covenant and all. That is where the author of Hebrew wanted to encourage them uh, to stay back, to stay strong in Christian faith and not to go back uh, to the Jewish you know, origins and not to go back to the Jewish practices again. And uh, how is he encourage, trying to encourage them to stay, uh, to stay back and to be strong in their faith? By First thing is by primarily showing the superiority of Jesus Christ and, the, uh, and, his, uh, and his covenant, which is the new covenant, highlighting these points he wanted to encourage them to stay stay strong in the christian faith so first thing is explaining superiority of christ and the new covenant that he has made that's why everywhere you will find a comparison in book of hebrews a comparison between jesus and the old testament things and a key word we find in this uh, entire epistle is better or we can some places it is written perfect you know, uh, Jesus, uh, the author says Old Testament things are shadows, but Jesus is the reality. Moses is there, but Jesus is better than Moses. Uh, and uh, Joshua is there. Jesus is better than Joshua. Old Covenant is there. The New Covenant is better and perfect than the Old Covenant. This is the language we find and repeatedly we find the word better. And it explains Christ is better than the angels. <laughs> and... Uh, we enjoy the uh, bring you know by learning these things we have in in Jesus Christ a better hope through faith in Jesus Christ we are enjoying a better hope in Jesus that is another point he brings and he uh, he also says Jesus has become uh, the better covenant than the Old Testament covenant and he also says that Jesus is a better mediator of the covenant than. Uh, the Old Testament priest, uh, like Aaron or uh, anyone. And uh, the new covenant is better than the old covenant. It is established on better promises than the Old Testament promises. And he also says that the heavenly things, they would benefit us, be uh, benefit us better. And the heavenly things are satisfied by better sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus, than the sacrifice of goats and rams or uh, whatever the animals they used to offer in the Old Testament period time. Overall, the purpose of this epistle has been to exhort uh, the readers of this epistle to stand firm in their faith. And 
having said that let us look at the main divisions of these epistles uh, and then um, uh, in the coming days we will discuss about those things so first there are few divisions in this um, uh, epistle the first division we will be talking about superiority of Jesus Christ which you can find in Hebrews chapter 1 uh, verses 1 onwards to Hebrews chapter 8 verses 6 so here the author he says Jesus is better than the prophets. He is a much better spokesperson. That's what he says. In the previous days, God spoke to us through his prophets. But in the last days, God spoke to us through his son, who is the exact representation of the father or express image of the father. And he also says, Jesus is better than the angels by virtue of his deity and humanity. So, uh, humans who are below than angels, God has given us the privilege. Jesus can be a better mediator, and He is better than angels, and uh, because He because of His deity and because of His humanity, He is the best one who can mediate uh, between God and humans. And He is better than Moses for because Moses is a servant, but Jesus Christ, He is the Son who provides rest to us. Moses could not provide rest. Joshua could not provide us rest. <laughs> but Jesus can provide heavenly rest to us. Moses is just a servant, but Jesus is the son of God. And he also says, uh, uh, Jesus is better than Aaron and his priesthood is better and superior than of Aaron's because of his incarnation again. So that's, that is first thing. And second thing we can find again, it is about the superiority, but this time is about the covenant, the new covenant which Jesus made, which he explained in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7 to chapter 10, verse 18. This covenant is based upon better promises. And this covenant is based on better sanctuary, not the earthly sanctuary, but the heavenly sanctuary. And this covenant is based upon better sacrifice, not the bulls and the goats, but the sacrifice of the only Son of God. And these exhortations drawn from, uh, you know, uh, his uh, the author's exhortation is are completely drawn from the superiority of Jesus and then superiority of the new covenant. And uh, the exhortations continued uh, from chapter 10, verse 19 onwards to chapter 13, verse 25. What are the exhorting? Exhort, what are the exhortations the author is sharing? So first thing he was sharing was to draw near to God, and hold fast. Let us come before the throne of God without any uh, we, we hesitation, but with confidence. Let us come to the throne of God and hold fast in our faith, and to run the race of faith with endurance. And he gives the example of all the heroes of faith in hebrews chapter 11 this chapter is called the chapter of heroes of faith okay and then there are some other miscellaneous exhortations we can find in the uh, book of hebrews primarily is for oh, come uh, come with confidence and hold fast uh, in your hold fast in your faith and then uh, to run the race of faith and he encouraged us uh, uh, through old testament saints and other Epistles. A unique feature of the epistle to the Hebrews are the warnings we find in the uh, Hebrews. In no other epistles will find these kind of warnings, but in book of Hebrews you will find this uh, warning saying like, if you hear if you hear the voice of the Lord today, uh, do not harden your heart, but heed to the voice of the Lord. And so this is a warning continually he gives, and he gives us the warning. Uh, give, taking the example of the Israelites who did not believe in God and have perished during the 40 years of their journey in the wilderness itself. So the uniqueness of these um, letter is it gives about some warnings as well. Let us look at some key warnings we find uh, in the book of epistles. Okay, The first warning we find uh, is... It is a warning against drifting from faith. Okay, uh, so what he says is do not neglect and do not be easily drift away from the faith. 
So we find it in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. The solution is to give more earnest heed to the things we have heard. So whatever the gospel message that we heard, whatever the scripture, whatever scripture speaks, let us hold fast and believe in it strongly. Let us not be drifted away by any kind of teaching. And uh, so be strong in our faith. That is the first uh, thing, first warning he gives not to neglect our faith. And uh, many say that Christians, <coughs> and in certain, sorry, in, it's especially in Hebrew, certain places it is written uh, as the author was giving warning, he brings about uh, Christians suffering the uh, anger of God. Like, you know, can Christian get anger? Can God's anger can come against Christians? Oh, yes. Non, the wrath of God may come against non-Christians because they don't believe, they rejected the faith. But uh, many Christians, we suffer the wrath of God because we neglect the faith sometimes. So non-Christians by rejecting it, Christians by neglecting it. So we can find warnings regarding that also in book of Hebrews. And they, we can find warnings against uh, uh, departing. Uh, we, you will find in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12 to 15, uh, which means it says, uh, through sins, de deceitfulness, we can become hardened and develop a lack of faith by which we may go away from the <coughs> faith and ulti excuse me, ultimately from the living God. This is another warning we find then he gives a uh, solution through exhortation uh, say by saying like you know church is so very important and where he says we need to exhort one another we need to exhort one another in our faith in the church that is a solution for us so that we may not be uh, we may not go away from faith and the Lord because of our deceitfulness or because of our sins. <coughs> it reminds us about the duty of the church to hold our brethren, uphold our brethren and strengthen one another and to stay strong in the faith together. And another warning we find is uh, warning against disobedience. We find in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 to 13. Like the Israelites in the wilderness who were disobedient, who did not have faith. And they all uh, have perished in the wilderness during the 40 years. So he gives us a uh, warning, don't be like them and not to be disobedient like them. and But to be diligent in listening to the word of God and to obey the word of God. Another warning we find is uh, uh, the warning against dullness. Okay. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11 to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 6 will find dullness of hearing can make it difficult for us to appreciate what God had given to us to appreciate the grace that we have received, faith that we received, the blessings that we received from God and the love we received from God. Like it is like, you know, uh, as, as we are, if we are not uh, appreciating what we received from the Lord, slowly we may lose the sense of it. You know, if we, if you did not completely always look unto the love and forgiveness the Lord has grace, the Lord has offered to us, slowly we lose the sense of it. Um, <clears throat> so he gives us a warning of becoming dull uh, to be sensible and sensitive towards what we have received from the Lord. And another warning we can find is a uh, warning uh, despising, like in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to uh, th verse 39, we can find it. It is possible for us to despise God's grace, to no longer have sacrifice for sins, but only certain fearful expectation of judgment. Like sometimes we despise the work of Christ. We don't give the required value. Uh, sometimes we don't, uh, we, we say, at the, in other words, the efficacy of cross. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't give the required uh, weight to the efficacy of the cross because of which we ourselves may suffer, uh, suffer within ourselves expecting the fear, the, you know, the wrath of God against us. 
and we may suffer sorrowful. So uh, he exhorts us to be confident about uh, confidence in the work of Christ and believe and be in it and to endure uh, so that we may not um, you know despise the work of Christ. <coughs> Uh, and la and and another uh, sorry the last warning we can find is the warning against defying you will find it in hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 to 21 it is possible for us to refuse to listen to the uh, one who, who now speaks from heaven many a times the lord will be speaking to us holy spirit will be speaking to us sometimes we may neglect him we may not uh, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So, other of Hebrews, he encourages us today. If you hear your voice, hear his voice, do not harden your heart, but to be obedient to it. So, and to serve the Lord uh, with reverence, serve the Lord with godly fear, serve the Lord with your whole self, and stand firm in your faith. So, this is another warning he gives. So, there are totally six. Uh, important warnings we find in book of Hebrews and that we'll be able to see. So in conclusion, what we can say about book of uh, Hebrews is this, which uh, with these writings, this book is uh, is a great word of exhortation to all of us. And as we proceed through this book, as we read through this, um, this book uh, in the coming lessons, it will be uh, my my desire to remind you of how blessed we are to have trusted in Jesus Christ. And as I said before, and to impress you with the superiority of Christ and his new covenant over the Old Testament uh, covenants and to warn you uh, with the love of God uh, of the real danger of apostasy, uh, real danger of taking light about our own faith. So this will this is my my goal, like you know, as I mentioned, to remind you, impress you, and to warn you, and uh, exposing the greatness of Christ and the greatness of uh, the covenant and the work He has done. So, Book of Hebrews is a very good package of all these things, and we will be exploring them in the days to come. So this is what uh, the introduction. Uh, about book of hebrews if you have any suggestions if you have any thoughts any uh, anything to add please feel free to add and we will be discussing uh, about the themes as well as various text text portions uh from the book of hebrews from uh coming week <clears throat> yes, yes, sir. I have a question. I mean, uh, you know, the <clears throat> chapter one, second verse says, as in these last days spoken to us by his son. Now, uh, <clears throat> some first of all, if he has spoken his by his son, how is he spoken by his son? And second, some uh, commentaries believe that it's like saying that uh, it's a revelation of the son and not necessarily a revelation so much of what he has said. Would you like to comment on that? That would be my first <laughs> first lesson. Uh, however, one thing we understand uh, very clearly, the God has spoken to us through his son. Uh, we need to compare that with the words Jesus said in book of John uh, with his disciples. If you have seen me, you have seen the father. The very purpose of Jesus, one of the main purposes of Jesus uh, is to show us the father and to send us the spirit, to reveal the father to us. How he revealed the Father to us is primarily is very simple. Uh, you know, till Jesus come, no one knows there is somebody called Son. After mm -hmm. Jesus come, only people came to know that God is a Father and his Son is Jesus. Uh, uh, until Jesus come, no one knows that there is a Holy Spirit, a person. You know, after Jesus came, only we came to know there is somebody called Holy Spirit. Previously, used to think Holy Spirit as a force or whatever uh, things those are there. 
but after jesus come only we came to understand god is not just a, uh, a static one person monad monotheistic god but god is father son and the holy spirit if jesus did not come to know jesus did not come we would not know god as a father we would be knowing somebody in heaven that's all and if jesus did not come we would not know that there is a holy spirit because of jesus came only we are able to know that god is father son and the holy spirit and we don't know the nature of christ sorry nature of the father we said about the father but what kind of person this father is jesus said if you have seen me you have seen the father so he revealed the character of the father he revealed the character of the holy spirit in his by he personification in other words he enacted he did not say god loves you he he came and he loved people and has shown this is how the father is doing mm -hmm. so in that yeah. manner he clearly revealed the father revealed god and god spoke to us through his son through uh, action that's what i could say mm -hmm. okay if i can just add to that uh, what you said praveen uh uh, Jesus, the incarnation coming in the flesh, uh, for lack of a better word, that's a language by itself. <laughs> the fact that he took on flesh and lived amongst us is a communication by itself. In other words, as Praveen said, he was revealing the Father, but he was also revealing who we are, human beings, uh, mm -hmm. that we are loved and we have you know, the greatest potential of uh, becoming, uh, you know, I mean, being in the image of God and becoming part of the community that God has uh, planned. So I thought maybe I'll just add that. Right. Um, one, one, one question uh, I would like to ask, and that is, uh, uh, you mentioned that the key word in the book of Hebrews is better. You know, Christ is better. New covenant is better. Right. So uh, uh, and that is perfectly, you know, acceptable because that is what the Bible, I mean, the book says. But I was just thinking how to help people not to get the wrong picture when we use the word better. For example, when we use the word better, everything is better. It might seem like as though something is wrong with the old covenant right uh, mm -hmm. and the new covenant was a correction of the old you know if you can sometimes uh, think that you can uh, uh, you, you can feel that the old covenant was wanting there were some mistakes in it it was faulty if you use the antonym of better it is worse than this you know i'm just i'm just uh, mm -hmm. speculating how some people may think and may also conclude we really don't need the old covenant. We can throw out the new te the, the old mm -hmm. testament and we can only stay with the new. So how can we uh, help those who might think that better means uh, we can completely do away with the old uh, mm -hmm. rather than to see it's a continuation and it's a fulfillment, you know. Can you just uh, get some thoughts on that? Yeah, I can say that. The, as I told you previously, also the word perfect is also another word for okay. this uh, better. You know, even. Buffet? Did you say buffet? Perfect, perfect. P perfect. Uh -huh. perfect. You know, Jesus is the perfect priest. Jesus is the perfect. He made the new covenant, is the perfect covenant. The right. old, you know, uh, <clears throat> I remember. Uh, you know, to <coughs> few years ago, uh, pre preaching a sermon, sorry, series of sermons on Christian maturity, and one among them is maturity. When we talk about mature, what is maturity? What is mature? When we talk about, we always think perfect, 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 which is not achievable in our human flesh. So, but the Greek Greek word used for in both in the place of perfect and better, wherever the Bible speaks, is the same word. Actually, when it comes to humans, we it, it goes into comparative degree. Yeah. Better, best, good, 
kind of thing. When you talk about God, it, it completely comes into perfect or superlative degree. That's all. We cannot say anything else. So Jesus is, when you talk about the covenant of the covenant that Jesus made, the work of Jesus, the person of Jesus, it is completely talking in the superlative degree. And when it comes to covenant, most of the times we think that there is a problem with the old covenant. That's why God made new covenant. I would mm -hmm. like to say the answer is both yes and no. Definitely there is a problem with the old covenant. And the old covenant is not helpful. It is not going to make anything profitable. That is the reason God made a new covenant. Literally, author of Hebrew says that. There is problem with the old covenant. That's why God made a new covenant. The problem here, he explains, the problem is not with the system. The problem is not with what the plan, what God introduced. The problem is with the humans. That's what Jesus said. Because of our human sin, it is not perfect. It is not helpful. <laughs> when it comes to covenant, uh, covenant, you know, God, God is not making covenant to Himself. He is making covenant with humans, and this covenant can become perfect when perfectly uh, God, uh, God, uh, God works in it, contributes towards it. When perfectly humans contribute towards it, then only this covenant will become perfect. If any one of them are not contributing perfectly, then that covenant cannot be perfect. So in the Old Testament, whatever the covenant was made, humans are imperfect. That is the reason we are not able to contribute towards it perfectly. So it, it was a disaster. So in the new covenant, God is perfectly contributing towards it. Now Jesus who became a human, he is perfectly contributing on our sides through his mediation, through his death, burial, resurrection. And through through his holy life, he completely on behalf of all humans, he perfectly contributed towards the covenant. That is the reason the covenant becomes perfect. So what I would like to tell you here is old covenant is definitely imperfect. It is not useful for us and we don't have to live according to it for sure. Uh, you know, we, uh, living according, trying to live according to that again is idolatry. We should not try to live according to it. We should live try, living according to the perfect covenant which was made by Jesus, by God, not by our work, but by the, <laughs> by God and God man Jesus, who made this covenant perfect. Old covenant is not suggestible because if you go to old covenant, continually we'll be going into failure only because we are not perfect. So better go through Jesus who made this everything perfectly possible for us and accomplished for us through him we make use of it so that is the way i would like to see it is not in a way like uh, compare comparing like you know this is better that is uh, you know uh, in, in those what whatever have said in those lines it, where, where <laughs> author of hebrew author is writing hebrew about is writing it and about talking it. about it he is explaining and exposing human uh, failures also human uh, uh, mistakes and uh, imperfection and that is the reason Jesus came and uh, he provided the aid by his own life and accomplished as a human and made the same covenant you know the, the actually the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world and book of Ephesians we all read God has chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless all his plans all his thoughts are before the foundation of the world onwards there is only one plan there is only one covenant God made. Okay. And that covenant is accomplished in his son, Jesus Christ. That's what God wanted. And to help us understand and accept it, he introduced this intermediary system. Uh, like, uh, like, you know, we give toy, toy bike to children before we give the real, car, real bike to the children like that. In right. such a way, he brought it forth, I feel. Yeah, I think that uh, the aspect of uh, uh, God's plan was perfect from the beginning. And this was intermediary. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then, of course, it moves towards perfection. And I think that is very important because some people might think, oh, God made a mistake. And so now he's correcting himself, you know. So that is where the problem is. And, of course, uh, I know some will have great difficulty in finding out the old covenant <laughs> <laughs> has a problem. I'm sorry. Uh, I think uh, yeah. Yeah, 
Anil, I think, and Bertie also had a comment. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, doesn't uh, Paul say one one of the epistles that uh, there was, uh, I mean, there was nothing wrong with the old covenant. The problem was lack of faith in the Israelites. So the problem with the with the humans, mm -hmm. the the law and all that was perfect, but we were incapable of following it. It was, it was a way for God to point us to a better solution, which was Jesus Christ. So in that sense, I think that the old covenant was not deficient or not bad by itself. It was the deficiency was in the people who were following. Yeah. Yeah, the plan of God starts with grace, but then it has to move to law because of people's problem. <laughs> Yeah. The, and then the grace is personified in Jesus. Sorry, buddy, go ahead. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Zachariah. Thank you, Anil. Thank you, Pastor Praveen, uh, for rightly speaking and upholding our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The great job done by God. Wonder, that's why, the, as you say, the book of Hebrews is really unique in that uh, it mentions clearly of Christ's superiority. It is, thank you for the instruction that we get, the warnings that we get, and uh, and uh, you know the blessing that we have received. Let us not min let us not uh, mm -hmm. you know minimize or let us not uh, what you call neglect uh, the blessing of Jesus Christ in our lives. You know because we are in Him, and we are changed, and we are uh, comforted, strengthened in every way. As each one of you is you know mentioning in one way or the other, and particularly Pastor Pastor Praveen, uh, you really have elaborated it. And Jesus Christ is the solution. He is. Uh, you know, uh, we are complete in Christ and uh, we have the hope of glory and, you know, such superlative terms, uh, you know, sometimes we miss, uh, we don't have the words to say it, but uh, we must experience Christ in our lives and we have to be faithful and truthful, I tell you, and, uh, you know, and uh, listen to the voice and believe. I may, I may go on and on and tell, you know, I want to exp express it, but we have Christ uh, who is everything to us. And uh, unless we are in Christ and, you know, because we, uh, if we slip or, or, or stumble, we have Christ to, you know, to lift us up. His sacrifice, you know, and his, uh, his life is in us, Christ's life. And the best part, he lived the human life, you know, God in the flesh. He lived human life and created us the new creation that we are. That's why we should never... Uh, Try to look back, uh, you know, to our uh, to our first parents, and yeah, uh, God has, uh, uh, you know, uh, in His love and mercy, His grace, as Zechariah mentioned, the grace, you know, that is there, which is given to us, and we should hold on to it, and uh, learn, and learn, and grow, <laughs> learn and grow, and you know, trust in Him all the way. Yes, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for the comments. Yes, Surya Murthy, sir. Uh, sir, you're on mute. Uh, you said many things against old covenant, including the use of the word disaster. Old covenant was a disaster, you said. Disaster? You <laughs> said many things against old covenant, uh -huh. including the word disaster. Old covenant was a disaster. I think it is not appropriate. Mm -hmm. When you say old covenant was a disaster, mm -hmm. I I can't re recollect uh, if Praveen used the word disaster. I, I don't. Yes, I don't yes. remember either. I'm not sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but yes. he did say that uh, it is, uh, you know, I yes. mean, uh, uh, the new is uh, perfect and hence no. this is imperfect. Defective. I think he used the word defective. The old covenant was definitely defective. Defective. Disaster in what would what context would it be a disaster? I don't understand. He, he used many words against the old covenant. Culminating in the word disaster. Okay. 
I don't. Uh, yeah. Uh, let, let uh, that, yeah. Uh, I think that's the reason why I asked my question, uh, bro, because some people might find, you know, might think that uh, that we are speaking against the old old covenant or old testament, which I don't think is is right. What you are you are upholding the old testament, but showing. In comparison, what is uh, what is moving towards the fulfillment, which is more perfect? I think that is what Praveen was trying to show. If I am understand, you know, if I understand it correctly. Yeah, right, right, Mr. Zakar. That's what uh, Praveen and, in fact, I was so thankful to hear all that and very encouraged. And uh, you know, it is true what you have said. Uh, not disaster, definitely not. Uh, Sunimuthi, I don't think even I heard. Uh, yeah, that, but uh, uh, but if Suramurti, if your question is uh, that we are uh, trying to disparage the old covenant, maybe Praveen, you can offer a, a, a clarification there. I don't know the no, word no. you used. I no, no. don't know what the of the word. What is disparage? Uh, sorry, Suramurti, we didn't hear you. Please, can you repeat? Oh, I think there is a bad connection. He was using many words against old covenant, culminating in the word disaster. So what yeah. is your point? So we are throwing out three-fourths of God out of picture. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, the old, all the speakings of the old are what God said. <laughs> we are certainly not throwing out God. <laughs> uh, we are showing a, you know, a, a movement, a continuum, right? <laughs> but uh, perhaps I would like to refer, <laughs> uh, respond to it in this, uh, just on a funny manner. I'm just saying, please don't take it in another way. Um, uh, Bible uses this language and says Apostle Paul also Old Testament, Old Covenant, Old Testament things are the shadows and Jesus is the reality it is just like uh, the uh, <clears throat> uh, evening shadows evening uh, sun sunset No, usually people say during the sunset the shadow will be the longer the longest shadow we get in the is in the west and it remains for hours and though the object is just one feet, the shadow can go even to 10 to 12 feet also. So it is just like that Old Testament looks so big and all, but ultimately the reality is the New Testament small thing. It is not about 75%, 30%, or 20%. Um, um, and if you go after this shadow only, it will lead us more and more towards the west where we will uh, we'll go towards, uh, sorry, it will be... The shadow will be focusing on the east. If you are following the shadow, you will go more and more into darkness only. And when we come to the uh, west, we'll be following more of the light. So uh, following the New Testament thing brings us towards the light, though it is short. And the Old Testament thing, I'm not neglecting and rejecting, uh, though it looks big. And following it will lead us more into darkness only. That's what I'm just saying. The New Testament says, all scripture is given for our guidance, inspired and given for us. Yeah. All scripture. All the scripture when it is read in its spirit, when it's right spirit. The scripture, uh, if you did not read it in, in its right spirit, it will become... Uh, Does it say that? Yes. Does it say it, like Yes, that? yes. Uh, Apostle, Paul writes, in Corinth, Apostle Paul writes in Corinth, Corinthians, epistle to Corinthians, he says that the word letter kills and the spirit gives life. Uh, so when you take the letter, when you take uh, things word, 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 word only and not in its right spirit, then it will lead us towards. How, how, can, how can people take Old Testament, which is so big, entirely in the wrong spirit? Oh, the entire world is going behind that. <laughs> a lot of people, a nation is completely after it. 
what uh, I think what I understand is that uh, if you read the Old Testament in the right spirit, it has a lot of benefit. Absolutely. That's what I'm yeah. saying. If you read in the uh, uh, wrong spirit, any book, anything, if yeah. you read in the uh, wrong spirit, it will lead us to do the death or destruction. We don't live in it. So, so the statement cannot be against the old, old covenant. Old covenant. No. It cannot there be against. Be, there cannot be a general general statement against old covenant. We don't have to make. You have made. Yeah. I think we, are, we don't have to make. <laughs> Uh, the New Testament also yes. says the Old Covenant is obsolete. Uh, that's a very, very strong word. So if you read it in the right spirit, you will know the Old Covenant had its purpose, but it has been fulfilled. And when Christ came, uh, the Old is now not this, operated as the New. So it is discarded. It is discarded. It's not discarded. See, that is where the mm. that is where I was. My question was: We should not ever think that we are discarding. We are trying to show the uh, the, the 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 continuum, the movement of God's perfect, you know, wow. process wow. of salvation to humanity. Well, somewhere we are struggling to reconcile our own. Irreconcilable, irreconcilable views. Uh, I think, I think you, I, I think you have misunderstood, uh, Surimiti. That's all I can say. I don't think we are, we are struggling to, uh, you know, reconcile or irreconcile. I think Anil has a word uh, as a thought. Anil, go ahead. No, no. Uh, we were mentioning about the right spirit, uh, reading it right. I, it, it also has to do with the right context. We can't just take it out of context and just yeah. quote a sentence and say this is absolutely right. rubbish or this is the absolute truth. It has also yeah. to see the context in which it, it it that's always the cardinal rule for interpreting the scriptures. Yeah. So, uh, so I thought I'd just add that that in addition to the right spirit it has to be in the right context. Right. Well, the time is up. Uh, and uh... I'll just I'll just uh, quickly mention it. Can I? Just give me a minute. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, as uh, Ms. Zachariah rightly mentioned, it's not discarded. Uh, the old covenant, uh, after the new country, uh, the, the Lord, mm -hmm. the uh, inspired scripture mentioned the new is uh, superior to the old, you know, because all it refers to God, Jesus Christ himself, God in the flesh. Okay. And also said that the old covenant uh, people, uh, you know, the people that came out of Egypt, uh, from Egypt into the land, I proceeded to the land. Therefore, they, uh, the God was not pleased with them because it was not received in faith. That's another point, okay? And hence they fell. But we are now called to you know, receive the faith of Christ in us. You know, it changes us. And thirdly, about uh, this thing I mentioned when uh, in the after the resurrection, when he walked with the disciples, three of them, on their way to Emmaus, he uh, you know, you open to them the scriptures. You know, the whole, the whole range, the whole, the whole, you know, the the whole scriptures are pertaining to the old. Saying it all, it all, they, they, you know, the writers, they all wrote about himself, about Jesus. He's saying they, they were all indicating to him, to Jesus. And now we should, and now in Christ we have that same fulfillment. And keeps on saying, and even Anil and all the others. You know, we know the how Christ has come and. And perfected, you know, his uh, shown us what love and obedient yieldedness. He did it in the uh, in bodily. He did it bodily, and we are now called to receive that same uh, Jesus Christ as a gift to us. And we trust in man. We are encouraged to, you know, in the New Testament to look to the to look to Jesus Christ. Uh, okay. You know, uh, everything, yeah, and, and to live uh, to live uh, to live overcoming. Uh, fulfilling lives, you know, in Christ. Okay. Praveen, it's yours. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I know definitely this won't be sad. This is a topic. It never ends, uh, especially discussion. I mean, the discussion never ends. However, we can... Um, bring it now and now and then we can 
add mm -hmm. more information, get add uh, get more clarity on this uh, uh, particular subjects. So, however, what I would like to say is uh, we'll be studying Book of Hebrews uh, from this week, and uh, I would like to encourage you also to go through that epistle, and uh, we'll be discussing about various themes and various textual portions in the Book of Hebrews. And thank you so very much for joining us for this evening uh, uh, Bible study. And uh, may you all have a good night rest. We'll have uh, we will ask uh, Rekha Ma'am to lead us in prayer. Then we all can uh, uh, you know retire for this evening. Right, Rekha, you are muted. If you can unmute yourself. Eternal Father, Almighty God, we come before your royal throne, thanking you for everything. Father, there are many things that we really don't understand. You're such a mighty and awesome God. But whatever you reveal to us, Father, may we really follow you and appreciate everything, Father. Our mind is still in, uh, in, in uh, learning, Father, and developing. So, Father, we really can't understand. But please help us to be, have faith and believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Father, once again for this wonderful time we have in discussions and all the things that we learn. And may we put into practice all that we do. Thank you once again, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.